In our last activity, you were detectives working to solve the case of the Minnetonka, Minnesota bank robbery. Like Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, you used observations, information about what happened in this event, and inferences, conclusions about what happened based on the observations you had, to solve the case. Some examples of both. Mr. Greenbag, the bank manager, had keys to the bank and vault, was out of town but delayed at the Chicago airport during the time of the robbery. We could infer that Mr. Greenbags came back from Chicago, used his keys to steal the money, and blew up the vault to cover his tracks since he was the only one with a key to the vault. However, other observations, that the delay in flight was due to unexpected repairs, and no clues about if Mr. Greenbags knew how to use dynamite, leads to an opposite inference that Mr. Greenbags couldn't rob the bank because he didn't know in advance he would have to, the time to and lacks the knowledge of dynamite. What about the janitor, Mr. Smith? We observed that he had keys to the bank. His father was a prospector. Mr. Ellington said he saw him outside the bank that night, although an airline clerk confirmed that Mr. Smith was in Dog Walk, Georgia, and he couldn't get a plane back at the time of the robbery. We could infer he stole the money because he had a key and could have learned to use dynamite from his father. Or we can infer that he couldn't have robbed the bank because he was too far away without the means of getting back and Mr. Ellington could have lied. For the Ellington siblings, we observed that Miss Ellington worked at the bank and didn't have keys to the bank, but sometimes borrowed Mr. Greenbag's key. Mr. Ellington works at Acme Construction Company, is in charge of the dynamite, but said it was stolen and he saw Hippie hanging around that day. So we can infer that they robbed the bank together. Miss Ellington provided the key and Mr. Ellington the dynamite. Or we could infer that Miss Ellington didn't know how to make a copy of the key and that Mr. Ellington was telling the truth about the dynamite, the hippie, and Mr. Smith. We observe that the hippie, Jersey Flowers, just dropped out of teaching college, was hanging around outside the bank the day of the robbery, was loitering at the construction site, and threw a package in the river right before the police caught him with $500. Anastasia Wallflower said she paid him $500 and he was at her parents' house all that night. We can infer that he stole the dynamite, cased the bank, snuck out of the Wallflower's house, and robbed the bank because he was desperate for money to pay off his student loans. Or we could infer that he was at the house all night until after the bank opened in the morning and the package she threw in the river was another illegal substance. He was a hippie after all. So how do we figure out who robbed the bank? When we organize our observations into groups of information that help us determine what happened, we are taking our observations and turning them into evidence. By determining what inference has the best and most supporting evidence and the least opposing evidence, we can figure out who committed the crime. Do you know who it is? But how does all of this relate to science, you might ask? We have typically seen scientists portrayed as old men with crazy hair or a person in a lab wearing a lab coat and carrying a test tube. However, scientists are more likely to be using technology in the lab or field, gathering data from observations, and working together to solve a problem that is eventually communicated to the scientific community. How do scientists do this? By putting the puzzle pieces of observations, qualitative, data from the senses, taste, smell, look, feel, and sound, and quantitative, data from numbers, of evaluating or organizing the information into evidence, and of creating inferences, the conclusion based on evidence and reasoning. If scientists do that, and we just did all of this and our Mr. Game, we are all scientists. We just have to refine our skills of observing and inferring as scientists have done for hundreds of years, in the classroom, in the environment, with technology, to the moon, and back. You don't have to be a nerd to do science, you just have to be willing to explore.